Hey, what's up, Grinder Cool? This is Colossus with a foreign cash cash video for you guys. Uh, I do not. I'm not gonna play a live session today. Well, I actually did play a live session today, but I'm going going to review it as I would review my own play uh, when I uh, when whenever I want to. So today I played. Today we are the. 12th of June and I played full ring cash and I played one session for about 50 minutes for you guys. Uh, I was playing 12 tables at the same time, uh, 10 and all, and I was running at a uh, VPIP of 12 and a pre flop raise of 9. Uh, my typical nitty full ring stats as you can see with like barely 3 betting. And what I was doing is I loaded up 12, uh, uh, 12 tables, I uh, tiled the tables and played them. And what I tried to do is during my play is to mark every interesting hand that I want to show you guys. Now I got in involved in so many hands that I couldn't mark them all. So I changed my, my I changed my mind and I'm actually gonna review every hand that I would review myself if I were like to uh, analyze my own game. So as you can see, I ran uh, pretty well. I won three buy-ins. Uh, I won't do want to mention that uh, I did not play perfectly and I definitely made mistakes due to the multi-tabling and just because uh, I, I didn't play the best I could just sometimes it just happens uh, that uh, that I feel like oh my god this hand I should have played better and that's what we are actually are going to analyze uh, right now so sometimes I might pause the video if I'm looking for certain hands that I want to analyze but the first thing usually I do is uh, go to the hand tab and as such and I rank the hands into either the amount I won or the amount that I lost. Now let's start off with the good stuff and the hands that I actually won and either I, I maybe I won by accident and played bad and sucked out so we're going to analyze all the games so the first hand that we can see here where I won a decent where I want to buy is pocket coins and as you can see here on, uh, on the bottom of the table here uh, I've marked this hand queen queen so let's go over it. it must have been an interesting hand otherwise I wouldn't have marked it and obviously uh, I stacked somebody but uh, that's that's all that's all results oriented thinking I marked the hand uh, for analysis so uh, let's see if I could have played the hand better or if we can make any deductions on how our opponents play so I have pocket queens in the cutoff let's see everybody folds and uh, the hijack raises the hijack is playing it's interesting uh, it's nice that my stats uh, pop up uh, 22 hands as I told you I just started up the session I don't have a lot of hands on these guys because I don't play 10 and all uh, full ring but uh, I did have 22 hands on this guy and because I was playing uh, obviously and the guy was playing 27 27 now Queens is the hand that I will not 3 bet versus like for instance if QVX 7A3 for instance would have raised here I probably would not 3 bet pocket Queens because I'm pretty sure that if I 3 bet pocket Queens against QVX 7A3 he's not gonna call me with anything worse but this guy was playing 27 27 and raising from late position Currently at that time I was playing 25-25, which is pretty pretty loose uh, for a full ring game. Obviously, uh, I don't know if this guy knows me. Uh, probably he doesn't know me, but I felt like okay here I can three bet queens in late position versus a late position race uh, for value in the sense that he is going to call me with worse hands. He's definitely going to call me with tens, jacks, uh, maybe any pocket pair even. Um, definitely ace king, ace queen and uh, some, maybe sometimes ace jack suited. Uh, not really sure, I don't know the guy. But anyway, I felt like uh, here I can re uh, three bet uh, for value. So I do three bet for value. I make it uh, nine big blinds. You can make it ten big blinds. Uh, it doesn't really uh, make a, a huge difference um, here 
Okay, and the guy calls me, and the flop comes 4 8 jack. So that's all my. It's a pretty decent flop for me. Uh, quite happy about it. So, standard is C bet, and I do C bet. I'm betting 130 into an almost $2 pot. Uh, the sizing is, is fine, in, in my opinion, in the sense that when I 3 bet, as a bluff and I make the continuation bet I tend to bet like a bit over a half the pot usually in three bet pots just because when I do really have a decent hand I can easily get the money in by just betting half the pot and if I'm bluffing it's uh, it's cheaper for me if I do get raised so uh, here uh, I do get raised and okay so this is interesting he raises my C bet in a 3 bet pot on a 4 8 jack flop. So I'm thinking, okay, I'm beat by aces and kings. So if he has aces and kings, um, I'm beat. So if I raise here, he's not gonna fold aces, kings. He might fold essentially ace, jack if he has this. Uh, if I shove on him here. And I don't really want him to fold his jack, obviously. He might be on a flush draw, but uh, if he is on a f uh, if he is on a flush draw, the m if I call here, the pot there's gonna be pretty much a pot size bet left. Let me make it some quick calculations. Three dollars six is eight dollars and about eight dollars left. So whether uh, if I so if I shove here, I'm gonna get called by aces, kings, and some hands that have really a lot of equity against me. Something like nine, ten of spades with like an open ender and uh, and a flush draw. So I feel like I can get a lot more value from him by just keeping his bluffing range in in here. And also, I'm, I was wondering. There, he's not really representing a lot of hands. He's not raising his jack, in my opinion, uh, because I mean he has show he has, he has uh, showdown equity. So either he has the flush draw, or he has me completely crushed, or he is bluffing. Against the flush draw, I am obviously not falling. Uh, but I'm also not raising him just because there's going to be a pot size bet left on the turn anyway. Whether a spade comes off, I'm probably. Uh, not falling on uh, if a spade comes off. Let's think about it. would I fold if a spade comes off? Um, um, it's interesting. Would I fold if a spade comes off? Uh, depending whether he, sh I, I guess I don't fold when a spade comes off. Uh, I've already made up my mind that I'm going here with the hand essentially. Uh, so I make the call instead of uh, raising, which I actually like. If I shove here, I'm only gonna get called by things that beat me, in my opinion. So the nine comes off, which is, yeah, uh, doesn't really change that much. Uh, now uh, there's a pot size bet left, as I told you, less than a pot size bet left. I have 676 left, so all the money is going in here uh, at this point. And he shoves on me. Am I really happy that he shoves on me? He can. Uh, I just hope that. Uh, I just hope that he is uh, essentially bluffing because I can't really put him on aces or kings because pre-flop he would have uh, four bet me. So his range is like. It's like really skewed towards bluff, and so I make the call, and he shows up with, uh, yeah, with the bluff uh, as uh, ace king uh, of suits. Um, did I play the hand? I, th I think I played the hand really well. I think if you re-raise the flop, you're just gonna get called. Your your, your equity is not gonna be good uh, if you uh, re-raise here on the flop, and by just calling him, I'm allowing him to just bluff away his stack. I'm keeping his range much, much wider by just calling his flop raise. So I think I uh, like the way I played this hand. Um, oh, by the way, if he shows up with aces here in the end, yeah, then so be it. I mean, uh, then he played his hand really well. and uh, That's fine by me. Uh, it's kind of cooler then. 
Um, and I wouldn't worry uh, too much about it. Okay, so let's see if I uh, selected some other hands. This ace king is the next one here. I played a big pot with ace king. Let's see what's going on here. I have ace king suited. Diamond dust, three hands, uh, no reads on. I have ace king suited. He makes it 2.5 from the cutoff. Uh, with ace king suited, uh, I'm three betting here uh, for value. And I, if I take it down pre flop, it's, uh, it's, I, I'm happy also. Uh, so I think it's pretty standard three bet here. He makes the call. I have no idea which type of player this is, diamond dust. Uh, I flop uh, my top pair, top kicker, uh, and on a very, very dry flop. So if I uh, definitely um, uh, um, uh, continue betting here, I bet here like anything, uh, essentially, all my bluffs. So I'm also betting all uh, my uh, all my value hands. Uh, I make the bet. Uh, again, now I'm betting 110 into uh, 190 pot. Again, it's like in a 3 bet pot, a little bit over half the pot. I would do this with my bluffs. I would do this uh, with my value hands, as I uh, mentioned before. I can easily get the money in uh, by betting 3 streets. Uh, you will see this. The pot is already, look, when he calls me, the pot is already uh, $4 and there is like $8 left. So easy to get the money in. Now uh, the, the, a blank comes off, the three of hearts, uh, which is essentially a blank. Yes, now I have the flush draw, but I don't think I need the flush draw, really. Uh, I think when he calls me, he either has like a weaker ace, or he is following me as a bluff, seeing what I'm going to do on the turn, or he has uh, hit like pocket deuces, pocket eights, pocket aces, and uh, or anything else but the major of his range I'm putting him on like is jack is then is queen and essentially that's about it um, so I'm betting here for value again hoping to get called by any ace x uh, not a huge batch size because I mean I'm really not afraid of any card I don't want to push him out of the pot I want him to call with his uh, weaker hands and you, as you can see, the pot is gonna be huge on the river compared to the stacks that I'm gonna the stack that I'm gonna have left. So there's really no chance that he like outdraws on me because there's no way I'm falling ever. Uh, he makes the call again. Uh, we hit our flush. I'm still putting him on like Ace X type of hand, and uh, it's ten and all. Uh, people like to call, so. I shove in all my stack with the nuts. He makes the call. Uh, obviously, I'm happy, and he shows up with uh, with one of the hands I didn't really expect, uh, pocket eights. Uh, in my opinion, he played the hand perfectly. Um, yeah, he made, he played the hand perfectly. Uh, that's all I can say. For him, it's a huge cooler that I hit my uh, hit my flush. Uh, on the, on, the, on the river. Um, I like the way he played it has because when he raises me on this flop, I mean he looks like full of sh full of full of it because the only hands that could be raising me there are bluffs and pocket eights and pocket deuces. Uh, so uh, well, actually, because but he doesn't think that far. That I think that he's gonna be full of shit because nobody's raising that flop. So he's just calling, um, which is perfect for, uh, which is uh, perfectly fine. Um, if he would have um, shipped it in on me, I probably also would have called because I have top pair, top kicker in a three bet pot and. Uh, it, when he would have shipped it, would have looked really bluffy, uh, in my opinion. Uh, so I would have definitely called it off, but he probably doesn't think that far. And I like the way that he didn't raise, just because of the fact that if I do not have an ace, he's falling out all my, all my bluffs. His hand is fixed, so this is important. He played the hand perfectly. I think I played the hand uh, perfectly. That's uh, how things sometimes goes. I got lucky. 
let's see if I immediately can find and here we have ace oh actually two two notes here I can see in the bottom let's see what I wanted to say about this or what I wanted to analyze Uh, here cut off the table is kind of short stacked cut off raises cut off is 67 0 only three hands though on the guy um, He must be new he is only half stacked which is uh, Great I do not three bet him reason being um, if I three bet him it doesn't seem like the guy who is going to fall to three bets in, uh, in the first place second of all he's short so if I make it one dollar pre-flop um, it's gonna be two dollars on the flop it's gonna have like uh, four dollars left if I make the C bet there is going to be yeah there's go I mean I'm practically pot committed because there's gonna be a pot size bet left on the turn and uh, I'm gonna put myself into crappy situations with uh, uh, in that case so I opt here to hit my uh, to just call another reason is if I three bet here I'm folding out a lot of his ace x type of hands so like ace 7 ace 5 ace 6 that he's probably raising with and I really want to keep those uh, in there and uh, be really happy when I hit my ace or my king uh, to get uh, some money in and the flop comes great uh, I flop top pair top kicker uh, I'm not definitely never dunking here. If he checks behind, so be it. Um, if he bets here, I probably don't raise him because if he bets here, there's not uh, that the pot is big enough uh, to get the money in, even if he checks behind on the turn. Uh, I think so. Let's analyze it. I don't know. Oh, wow. Wait. Oh. I didn't see that there was another guy in there. Oh, there's a nitty guy also in there. Um, does this change my play in any way? Uh, it makes it more interesting to squeeze because the 11 7 guy probably doesn't have a really strong hand. Um, but still, the pre flop razor is not gonna fold, so I like the call. Um, because of the preflop raiser who is, who is unlikely to fold and also I have um, a relative position so if the donkey uh, makes the C bet I can see what the nitty guy does VCG player VCG it's I don't I don't know uh, VCG tells me something from 2 plus 2 I don't know VCG yes, it's a, I think it's a famous member or something whatever uh, I like my call preflop um, I don't really like to get ace king all in preflop anyway uh, against an unknown uh, I hit a pair top kicker and interestingly the nitty guy dunks into two players here uh, that's interesting I make I merely make the call just because if I raise the nitty player I don't think I'm ever good if he sh uh, if, if he continues in the hand so uh, I make the call and uh, the unknown probably bad player uh, makes the race which I'm pretty happy with now if we see gay player here comes over the top I might actually fold my hand and the reason is because then I'm putting um, on a set and on a really really good flush draw Yeah, I'm putting him on sets and on flush draws, and I really don't uh, uh, think that I'm gonna be in that great a shape against a needy player uh, if he comes over the top of this race. But uh, luckily, he falls, and now I have to make a decision whether to ship it in or not. If I ship it in, I'm falling out all the bluffs that Patrick 090 has, and he's gonna have quite a few bluffs in there because people tend to raise dunks like all the time and he just got dunked into and he got dunked into pretty small so I'm happy yeah I make the call I like the call uh, essentially if a, even if a club comes off I'm not falling ever
I don't know what comes off, uh, a blank comes off, I check it to him, uh, there's only a pot size bet left, so even if he checks behind here, and I have this in mind I already on the turn, even if he checks behind here, I can still shove uh, the river easily and uh, get the money, but uh, he does the work for me and ships it in, I make the call, and he shows, come on, what does he show up? Okay, and he shows up with king queen. So, in his yeah, obviously for him it's a in, in it's a cooler kind of cooler. Um, yeah, it's a cooler. But the nice thing about the, this play is here without three betting ace king. I don't know if he would fold king queen offsuit, and I'm saying that he will always. I'm not saying that he will always fold king queen offsuit to a three bet. Uh, Maybe, maybe he doesn't, I don't know him. But this is the nice thing about play, slow playing ace king pre flop. You're dominating so much of that range, and that's exactly what I'm what I'm doing um here. And uh I win a nice spot by not three betting uh, ace king pre flop. Let's see, let's see if and uh, by all means, if you don't agree with any of, uh, with some of my plays, uh, definitely uh, make a comment in the forums here. I'm just analyzing my own play, uh, seeing what action would have been uh, the best. Here I have Ace King on the button. I raise small blind calls, small blind twenty hands, and has played like one hand. Big blind folds and I flop top two uh, on a on a throwy flop uh, in the sense that there's a lot of gut shot plus pairs. There's uh, flush draws. Uh, I do have top two. There's weaker. Uh, there is a weaker two pairs here, and he dunks into me. Um, he is only half stacked. Um uh, here I don't think it's a good idea to slow play because one so many hands are going to destroy my action or give him uh, the best hand like any jack or queen would be terrible a heart wouldn't be horrible in the sense that even if he has the flush draw I have the redraw um so uh, can I call here Why would he? Why would he dunk into me here? If he dunks into me here, I'm putting him really on a hand because this flop really hits my range uh, to me. So why would he dunk into me without with complete air? So I'm putting him on either like yeah, uh, ace ten, king ten, something like ace jack, ace queen, uh, even maybe ace queen with with, with, with like. Yeah, no, he can't have hearts. But anyway, I'm putting him here on a hand that has value. So I do decide to raise. And I'm making my raise such a size that I can shove any blank turn card. Like if, like for the deuce, well, any card between the deuce and the nine, uh, I will be shoving the turn. Uh, because 153... 370 yeah I can shove the turn uh, uh, yeah I can shove the turn if he makes the call so uh, my resizing is uh, finer it's a little bit small maybe 153 dollars for 350 left yeah well there's about a pot size battle yeah a bit a, a little bit a little bit less than a pot size bet so I like it uh, I don't understand why he dunk bets and then folds here um, must have been completely bluffing. He's not folding any flush draws here. I mean, I don't know what he is doing. Maybe he's folding like King Jack, something like this King Queen, 10 Jack, 10 Queen. Um, maybe. But I don't understand why he would not, why he would dunk and not just check call because he has showdown value. And I'm probably c betting this flop with like any of my pocket pairs that I raised pre-flop. So, but I don't know if these guys think 
that far ahead. Um, so I don't know what he was dunking here and then falling. But I like my race. Um, I think I like my race. Uh, maybe you guys disagree. I like it. Uh, okay, let's continue. Uh, okay, so we have the ace king here. Let's see if jacks. I made a note on this hand here. Let's get it up. Uh, jacks. Oh no, I don't want to see. I never, never. When I analyze my hand, never, never. Sh uh, this just click away the known whole cards. Just show your cards and the action because it's gonna influence your decision always. Um, and that's never good. I have pocket jacks here. I hope. Why is no stats coming up? Let me reload the hand. I really want some stats because sometimes it does influence my play. No, they're not coming up. Only for this guy. Strange. Uh, anyway, uh, Ruo mounts um, small blind versus big blind. He raises 4x against me. I can. If I 3 bet here, I have a decent hand and I don't really. I have position, I have a decent hand. If I knew that the guy was like a spew tart, I would 3 bet. But I'm, if I'm not sure, I probably just make the call here um, and keep my hand really disguised. Um, if I 3 bet here, I'm really turning my hand into a bluff versus most of these guys. Most of the the tight aggressive guys, most of the regulars. If I three bet here, I'm turning my hand pretty much into a bluff. Uh, so yeah, I make the call. It's unfortunate that these stats don't come up. Uh, the flop comes is six five. Um, he makes the c bet sixty into eighty. So now I'm putting myself into his shoes and uh, he is c betting this flop with his entire range. So. When the ace comes on the flop, am I angry that the ace come on the flop? Yeah, in a certain way, but in another way, I know that he's c betting this with, with yeah, any pocket pair, any any like king queen jack is uh, c betting here, uh, nine ten, everything is c betting here, uh, practically. So I'm happy just to make the call and see what the action is going to be on the turn. Uh, another heart comes off. I don't know what he does, and he checks to me. Now. I don't really see any value in uh, betting here. If I bet here, I'm gonna get called by <laughs> yeah by Ace X um, yeah by Ace X essentially maybe Kings and Queens if he has this. But I think like if I bet here, everything that I beat is going to fold. So I check behind here. I have showdown value. Uh, there is a heart. If I if I am behind, I can hit my heart. Um, and uh, I check behind. The ten of heart comes off. Uh, he checks again to me. And now I'm thinking if there's any value in betting. I think uh, nine, ten, seven of hearts, eight of hearts. I think there's small value in. Um, in betting here, I just want him to call me with any hearts. I think if I make a bet like I'm betting like one fourth of the pot, just to and 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 chase and entice him, entice and chase whatever this English, uh, entice him to make the call here with like any heart that I beat. Um, if I get raised here, I'm falling. By the way. But people, and the reason why I'm not afraid to get raised here, although my bet is really small, is that people don't check raise rivers without the nuts. So if he raises here, uh, he's essentially has like king of hearts, or like seven eight of hearts, whatever. Um, he makes the call. I don't know what he shows up with. Oh yeah, I should. Um, uh, he has ace king. I'm. Um, and this is like the reason why I made it even you see this small value bet on the river even gets called by ace king uh, offsuit. Uh, if I were him, uh, I'm folding there because if he has any stats on me, he should be knowing that. Well, actually, I 
Actually, I might have, actually, I might bluff this river if I didn't have the heart. So actually, his call is isn't that bad in a way. But on in the other hand, I'm checking behind all my value hands. So either I'm bluffing or I have a heart. So. I don't like his play, by the way. I don't understand why he does not continue on the turn. I mean, he there's so many bad turn cards for him to uh, river cards for him to come. And actually, one did come off, so I don't like his play. In his shoes, I would definitely keep betting. I would bet the turn, and if I get raised, just give up, and I would fold, especially against a guy like me. Uh, because I'm not raising that turn uh, with anything worse than his king, so uh, he can easily make the fault there. Uh, now, by checking, he loses a lot of value because now, let's say for instance, I was floating him with like the exact hand that I have, for instance. Now I have like the heart of uh, the heart flush draw. So actually, I might have made I might have made another call. If he bets like a tiny amount that I will never raise as a bluff, but might still call with worse uh, with flush draws, so he should definitely be betting the turn here. I see this a lot. A draw comes in, and people have like a good, a really good hand because top pair, top kicker, uh, blind versus blind is a, is a good hand. And I see this often. The draw comes in, and people check behind out of position, just because they're afraid to get probably get raised and gonna have to fall, but. Believe me, people don't uh, raise turns or rivers without something really good that you, he can easily bet fault here. I don't know why he's afraid to do this, but okay, I'm pretty happy that he didn't do it. Uh, uh, so, nice hand. Uh, let's see. Jacks, is there any other hand? I didn't make a mark, but I do want to see what happens here. Um, jacks. Uh, under the gun raises. I hope some stats. Yeah, stats pop up. The guy is all, and he gets called by a donkey guy. Here, hair got 30 hands on him, playing 60, all, well, pretty much all of his hands. And I have jacks in, well, middle position in the hijack, essentially. Uh, I don't 3-bet, I think, yeah, I make the call here, I don't want to 3-bet and I don't want to 3-bet jacks against this guy's under the gun opening range and I especially want to keep the hair god 62 guy uh, in the hand just uh, because I'm gonna make a lot of money against that guy if I hit something decent now um, flop comes 5-king-9 um, if tear jerk here, uh, C bets. I am falling. I expect everybody to play really straightforward uh, on this spot because the fl the flop is four-handed, so um, five-handed. Sorry. Uh, so everybody is gonna play pretty much uh, straightforward here. I am ch uh, checking here. Uh, if I bet here, I expect one of these guys gonna call me with a king. Um, Yeah, I can actually. Can I make the bet here? <laughs> if I bet, I'm really over representing my hand. I'm really representing a king if I make the bet here, or at least a, a decent flush draw. So I decide to uh, check behind here and see what uh, happens. I was thinking about something else, uh, that's why I was silent. Like for instance, let's say on the flop, Pirko makes a bet after everybody checked. If one of these guys would call, I'll definitely fold my jacks. The thing is, would I fold my jacks if he, uh, if everybody else would fold? I believe so. Reason being is that I don't think that Pirko is going to bet into four players without anything decent, with a, at least a king. Yeah. 
in my opinion. Might do it with a nine, but I doubt it. So if he's gonna bet into four players, he probably is gonna have a king or at least a decent flush draw, which he can double barrel on the turn, and I can't really continue with uh, jacks. Now, obviously, the turn is a jack, but we don't know this. Um, so yeah, that's the, that's how I analyze my. I always asking this what if situations. So uh, it's interesting to hear my train of thought. It's uh, it's interesting to hear your own train of thought uh, in these situations, and it's gonna help you later on when you play like twelve tables to make decisions a uh, much faster than uh, than when uh, than when you are starting out. Now uh, I hit triple jacks, which is obviously great. Um, mm, I make the call here. What the. F Huh, it's kind of weird. But I merely make the call here. If I raise here, I'm representing. If I make the raise here, I'm representing a set, that's for sure. Well, actually, a set would uh, bet on the flop, especially into four people. So if I raise here. I'm representing 10 queen and that's about it and pocket jacks but that's really a limited range in my opinion so would it be beneficial here to have raised him I don't put him really on a strong hand though tear jerker because he with a strong hand like ace king he's definitely is king king queen he would have bet on the flop so i don't know maybe as like queens queens is jack well, well i have two jacks so queens no tens is not gonna bet here so i have the feeling that when i raise here i'm gonna have him fold so often I don't put him really on a flush draw because I think a flush draw is going to bet on the flop. He had a pre-flop initiative, so and it's a king high flop, so I don't put him on a flush draw. So, I mean, either I'm bet I'm putting him on like a weakish hand or a really strong like ten queen type of hand, and that's it. So that's probably why I make the call. To, so do I like my call or not? I think I like it. I really, I obviously, I hope that no ten or a queen comes off. Um, because yeah, it makes the, all the gut shots get there. What comes off? Yeah, obviously the queen comes off. He checks to me. Is there any value in betting? I don't think so. I've already didn't put him on a really strong hand. Um, the way he played, I can't really put him on a strong hand. And when I bet here, I'm only gonna get called by a, fan, a ten, in my opinion. So. I check behind here and he shows up with ace queen suited. I don't really understand why I didn't put him on ace queen suited just because he didn't see bet. Now the reason he didn't see bet is because the f the hand was four five handed. So that's the reason why he probably didn't see bet thinking that he has no fold equity against four five people. But if I were him, I would I would see bet, and uh, because you have so much equity in the pot with your one over card and your flush draw, that I wouldn't I wouldn't be I wouldn't be scared at all, and probably nobody is holding East King because they would have squeezed some of the time, not all the time. So uh, if I were him, I would have definitely bet on the flop, and he would have probably taken it down on the flop because I don't I wouldn't have called. Uh, uh, a C bet, even with jacks. So uh, interesting. Also, a nice thing to do uh, on stars is when uh, on with Poker Tracker is probably also on Holder Manager that you can make notes in Poker Tracker, and when you're playing, these notes uh, also pop up. It's like not using the software from Stars or any other site. Uh, but using the poker tracker notes, I never really actually do it, but it, it might actually be more be more beneficial because if you analyze your hands, it's really easy to make uh, more notes than during the game itself. Okay.
I'm just uh, going over the hands that I actually played. As you know, I'm playing 12F9, so I don't play that many hands, so it's easy uh, to go. Okay, here uh, we are. I am under the gun. This is about the weakest hand I would raise under the gun. The reason I probably, one of the major reasons I raise here is that everybody is needy, and the guy in the big blind is terrible. He's playing more than 50% of his hand, so really happy with my raise here pre flop. I even when I'm playing 12 tables I can uh, still notice it which is uh, a bonus point for myself uh, we, I flop top pair, top kicker against this guy uh, I can imagine me going here for uh, a couple of street, well, three streets of value against this guy oh wow he dunks into me hmm interesting uh, blah, blah, blah. I can raise I can call if I raise and the money goes in, am I happy against this guy? <sighs> I specifically have to put him on like, yeah, there's a lot of flush draws and straight draws and uh, there's some queen jack, king queen that I'm maybe folds to a, a raise though, queen jack something. Uh, I don't know what I actually do, I think I would call. I am always more for the, you probably noticed this in my game that I'm for the conservative uh, type of plays when I really have the best of it let's say for instance if I had pocket queens here I would make the race but with ace queen I wouldn't it's just I'm really conservative in my play which in one way is good for me I don't there, I, I play with a lot less variance than most other people I think so just because I don't get in like marginal situations even let's say for instance I raise here he shoves or re-raises it puts me in like the situations I really don't want to be in because even if he has like uh, even if he has like king queen of hearts I mean I'm not in a great situation here um, uh, if he has like Eight, nine of hearts. I'm also not in a great situation. I'm actually might be. I'm actually behind. If he has a set, I'm completely crushed. Um, so I decide to make the call. And yeah, I mean, you can dis you can discuss this whether to raise uh, this or not. I opt to call. Keep his range wide. Does it mean that I'm folding if a heart comes off? Not at all. That's the reason why I keep the pot small. Uh, he bets. Uh, I'm not folding here. I hope, yeah, I make the call again. Three comes off. Uh, no matter what he bets here, I'm calling. Uh, unless he likes, bets like four, I'm probably, I'm probably, if he bets like full pot, I'm probably falling. Uh, but he bets like one dollar ten cents. I'm getting like one into four odds, so I don't have to, I have to be correct here like 20% of the time, something like this, and I'm definitely good here 20% of the time. Um, so I make the call and he shows up with four. What the f so you see these guys four eight. So I didn't even know that he showed up with this. And if I would have raised on the flop, I would have gained a lot less money. And that's why I'm so conservative with my decent but not great hands because people just do weird type of stuff. And I, 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 I've got, I've got maximum value out of this, this guy uh, by just making him play like an idiot, allowing him to play like an idiot. If I raise him on the flop, I'm forcing him to play his hand much better, uh, in the sense that he's gonna fold this hand, but he's gonna continue with, uh, with like hands. Uh, my equity is not at all so good. Obviously, if he might have gotten king queen and if I raise he might have shoved and I call and I crush him but I mean that's only one hand and well it's uh, it's uh, like uh, how many combinations I am holding one queen so it's not that many combinations like eight combinations I guess six combinations with king queen uh, but uh, so I hope you guys see where I'm, where I'm, where I'm going with this uh, 
and this reinforces me that, so I'm analyzing my game and this reinforces me that I'm playing uh, in a good way uh, when I see these hands type of, when I see that villains uh, villains show up with this type of hands because when I'm playing like tw 12 tables or 16 tables I don't see what people show down with because I mean I'm not focusing on and uh, I'm, I'm focusing on other tables when I make the call uh, I don't look at the results I can't look at the results okay Let's see, I made a note on this hand. We have pocket sixes. Um, pure easy set mining guy. Oh, it's the same guy as I think, as the previous hand. I think it's, yeah, it's definitely the same guy because I have the same position. Look at my stats, I'm playing 7-3. Uh, if I'm playing, I'm just putting, if I were in any of these other guy's shoes, like this guy playing 9-3, 10-10, 11-11, 13-11. I mean, I'm never bluffing. Flop. Well, when I do, when I get raised like uh, by a guy who plays like me, uh, I mean, it's an easy fault. I make the call for set mining, and the guy is fully stacked, and he's an idiot. So, well, I'm, I should not be using these words. Uh, he's a fish. And do do do. -do. We hit our set. Great. Uh, especially great because it's an ace high flop. I'm really surprised he didn't see bet this. The flop is really dry. And he doesn't make the C bet. Uh, and previously, with the 4 8, I didn't know, know which hand came up first, this hand or the previous one. Previously, he dunked into us with like complete air, and now he's not C betting this flop. So, I mean. Weird, but I hope I do not check behind here because because this guy you should not be slow playing anything against. So yeah, I like my bet here. Uh, he makes a call. Uh, five is a blank. Uh, I'm 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 pretty sure that I'm gonna bet huge on the turn. Yeah, 180 is, uh, is, is a pretty huge bet size on the turn, just because this guy uh, is not going to fall. I don't think he even falls like pocket kings here. Pocket queens, pocket jacks. Not uh, Maybe he falls on the river, but definitely not, not, not. He's not ready yet to fold. So, and he's definitely not, not falling any ace. So, uh, ugh, and then the seven comes off. Uh, is there value in betting? This is where my neediness kicks in, and I probably am not going because I can't really. If I if I shove here or make a decent sized bet, I can make like a small bet fold type of hand, like bet like two dollars and fold. Um, but um, I'm gonna curse if I bet two dollars and fall to this to this monkey. So I think I take the safe route and just check behind, because this guy can have like a four or a nine in his in his range. I mean, this guy is playing 53%, so I, you can't really put him on anything. Let's say if the seven was like a jack or or a queen or a king or. Uh, or a deuce, or, or a three, I'm definitely potting this, uh, well not potting, I'm betting like four, four fifty something, I'm betting huge, yeah, and you see, I, I don't understand, this guy has got like a good hand now, his queen, and then he decides to go into check call mode, um, I mean, this guy is just a uh, random, Stuff. I don't understand why I didn't just stack him here. I mean, with this type of stats, he should be stacking off here like instantly. But he didn't. And he well, he got l well. I got well. He got lucky. I mean, I mean, he got lucky that the seventh screws up my set here. Uh, you can discuss this if I, whether I should um, bet two dollars here on the river to get still get value from his ace x type of hands that he's going to call with. Um, but I mean, you can discuss this. I'm yeah, I'm torn in between. I I bet that Carothers, the other instructor I can't school, would probably bet two dollars and fall to a race. Um, 
me, I'm more conservative, and if not a se if no seven or a nine would have come off or four, I probably I'm I'm betting like huge on the river, but not this time. Um, so be it. I should keep this in mind, though, that I can should maybe have bet folded there. Uh, interesting. Uh, I don't think anything is interesting here with kings. Let's see how I play that. Oh, I didn't. Oh, yeah, I think I remembered this one. Uh, I don't 3 bet this guy. This is a mistake. I should be 3 betting here. I don't understand why. I probably mis not misclicked. I don't know. Is there any squeeze? But usually I'm three winning here against a 25-22 guy. He's nitty enough that he uh, he's loose enough that he's gonna call me with worse hands uh, after I three bet him. I do have nitty stats. If he looks at my stats, he's probably gonna think, "Oh, this nit three bets me." He's gonna have aces or kings. But yeah, I, mean, I don't know if this guy's really. F yeah, he probably is thinking that for his stats look decent. He's a bit too loose in my opinion. Uh, I should be three betting here, uh, but also calls. This is a mistake. Um, he bets 80 cents. Really dry flop. I don't see any reason to raise uh, on this flop. If I raise here, I'm again representing like pocket deuces, pocket fives, pocket jacks, and that's it. So I should not be raising here. I make the call which I like. I'm not afraid of the all-in guy. If this guy shoves, I'm calling all-in guy. If this guy all-in shoves, and Booba Babu makes the call, I'm cursing, of course, because I did. I'm gonna curse because I didn't three that preflop, and I have no idea then. I don't expect all in guy though to shove light here. He's 29 and hasn't raised 30 hands and he hasn't raised one. So if he shoves and this guy Buba, Buba Babu calls, I'm probably gonna fold my kings. How nitty it seems, but I'm gonna fold it just because I screwed up uh, pre flop. So, some food for thought. Um, just because I don't see 40, the 14 0 guy to be r raising here against two people here with anything worse than kings essentially maybe queens he would do it but i don't see him doing it with ace jack i'm essentially putting him on a set if he does uh, ship uh, re-raise all in here but he shouldn't be raising all, uh, with a set here because the flop is super dry there isn't like no 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 card can kill his action uh, essentially um but I don't expect people to think uh, that far. So the turn is uh, the 10. He checks to me. I should be betting here. Uh, yeah, I should be betting here. And I do bet here. Uh, the guy folds. Uh, I won the hand. Did I play it well? I think pre flop. I should have uh, 3 betted. I guess against the 25 22 guy. Do I. Does it, is it a big mistake to make the call there? No. Uh, but. Uh, let's see if there's anything interesting here. I have pocket fours, but uh, there's a four, so I don't think anything is set. Not getting any money. Uh, here I made a note on this hand. Let's see how it plays. Uh, King Jack suited. Race. Uh, blind versus blind against uh, a loose guy. I'm raising here for value. Uh, the guy's playing f f all 50% of his hands. He makes a smallish three bet. Uh, I can't really fault with King Jack so that uh, versus like 30 cents more. He is the, the, the problem is that he is uh, really small. It's stacked smallly, and uh, the problem is going to be if I hit my jack, I'm practically have to go with it. Uh, although that, if I hit my jack, yeah, I have to go with it essentially. Uh, flop comes super duper uh, with 
the flush draw. I checked to him, planning to, uh, if he bets, uh, planning to check raise all in, uh, put them all in, but he checks behind, which uh, sucks. Uh, the 10 comes off. Uh, once, uh, when he ch uh, checks, when he makes a small 3 bet pre flop and he checks behind uh, this flop, he never has aces, kings. Um, never aces, kings, queens, uh, jacks. Uh, so I'm putting him on like ace king, ace queen, ace jack, uh, something like this. But uh, maybe some pocket pair. But all, all of these hands actually beat me. So I hope I make the bet here because I can fall out a lot of his ace highs that beat me, and I can also fall out all, a lot of his pocket pairs that also beat me. So yeah, I do make the bet, uh, which is great. Uh, if I get called, I have equity, and I do expect to. Uh, fall out a huge part of his range that beats me. So, good bets. <sighs> okay, uh, Mr. Annoying Guy plays it annoying and makes the min raise. I'm getting 1 into 5. I don't think he has a 10 either because, I mean, he's betting a 10 on the flop uh, for sure. And with it, another 10 coming on the turn makes even the chances even less that he makes uh, that he has a 10. So and I'm getting really nice odds to go for the flush draw. I don't want to ship it in here um, because I think he's not falling if I ship it in here. Um, and I'm getting so such nice odds to draw. So why would I? Sh uh, why should I ship? Uh, so I do hit my draw. Uh, I check to him because I must. I, I can only put him on, on bluffs essentially. Or some weird play aces or kings, which is definitely gonna bet on the river. Uh, I, th I think so. I, th I can only put him on kings with all the evaluation that we did. I can only put him on, on some bluff type of hand. So if I put him on a bluff type of hand, why don't I ship the turn? This is interesting. Why don't I ship the turn if I put him? on a bluff type of hand because if I ship the turn he's still gonna call me with a pair of nines and you know this guy is 53 24 I was getting really nice odds and as I told you before I play really conservative so when I'm playing draws out of position and I'm gonna make a video about this I usually well I usually get the money in if I feel like I'm not getting the odds to draw out of position. Then I will, and I feel like I have falling equity. Then I will get the money. And in, in very short, I will make another video, a short video about it. I already made how to play draws in position, and uh, now I'm gonna make a video out of position. Um, so, uh, but the essence for the video is going to be that, like, uh, when I'm getting the odds, when they give me the odds, and people play bad at these micro stakes, I'm just gonna make the call, and I'm not gonna shove them with a draw because first of all at this micro stake you don't have fold equity and why the hell would I shove I mean if they already give me the odds the direct odds to draw to it uh, I might as well take it I mean I, I'm not losing money by doing it so oh, what happens oh I check to him and he checks behind and he shows up with ace queen yeah exactly one of the hands I put him on um, I mean, he played his hands pretty face up. Uh, it's unfortunate that he didn't shove. Uh, he didn't shove the river. Um, but okay, so be it. Um, okay, I'm gonna quickly see if there's uh, there were many spots. Uh, I only played like 650 hands, but there were many spots. Uh, talk about okay here I have tens I will still have to go over the hands that I played bad so I think this video is going to be a bit longer ace queen what the, okay some guy here uh, DS Chikov makes it 5x from under the gun with pocket tens pocket tens here for me is uh, purely set mining uh, whether it's pocket sevens or pocket eights pocket nines pocket tens here uh, I'm set mining uh, I made a call the guy is fully stacked so I don't hit my sets 2, 4, 6 flop, uh, decent flop, um, he checks to me, if he checks this, I'm 
off, I actually should not be showing the thing as asking. Uh, if it checks here to me, he either has like something, yeah, I, don't, I, I think I have the best hand. So I have the best hand. I think even he's gonna bet like ace king with any of diamonds. Uh, do I fold if he see bets? No. Do I make the bet if he checks to me? If I make the bet, I feel like I'm gonna get. Hmm, I mean, I'm folding out everything. I feel like I have the best hand here a lot. There may be some hands that will call me is like pocket and eights, nines, with a diamond or even another diamond. I can get value from that. Uh, like hands like ace queen without the diamond, ace jack without the diamond is going to fold. Uh, and I really, I also don't want to see that and get raised out here uh, because this would suck. So I think checking behind here and taking the conservative line is going to be uh, good here. Uh, so betting here isn't bad either. Um, I check behind here and the three of diamonds comes off. Uh, I check here. I think I'm gonna check behind again. Uh, there's no value on betting. If I bet here, I'm only gonna get called by a diamond that beats me. So yeah, I do check behind. The two comes off. And now, it's interesting whether I can take a bet. This is again like, can I make value on betting here? But I think like pocket eights and pocket nines would see bet this flop. So I don't think there's a lot of value in betting here. It's like, I know I have the best hands, but can I really make a bet for value? I don't think so. So I think I check behind, yeah. And he shows up with his queen uh, half cents. Um, well, I think uh, pretty standard hand, uh, except for my maybe my flop play. Most people would have, would have made a bet on the flop. Um, I like to I like to check behind and let people take like a step to me on the turn because I think like once I check back the flop I I, I have nothing and they're gonna bet their in, entire range uh, so uh, I like to check uh, back the flop and call a turn bet. Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, hands that I probably lost, not, not met that many hands that I lost, so Ace Jack suited, um, I raised from under the gun, uh, the worst hand that I probably raised from under the gun, Ace Jack suited, Ace Jack offsuit I would fold from early position even, from the first three positions in full ring I would fold Ace Jack offsuit, Ace Jack suited is fine, Ace Queen offsuit I would also raise. Okay, I get called by a needy guy, 1111. Uh, flop top pair, top kicker. Uh, really nothing much I can do except see that here. Uh, the guy is short, he is needy. I don't expect him to, to get called by a lot of wars. I expect to get called by flush draws, queens. I mean, this is like, this is the reason, this is why I hate playing against like EPRST 17i like guys who play 11-11 there's really not a lot of value he's obviously gonna call me with jack queen jack king uh, if he makes a call preflop even with those hands but that yeah he probably does call with jack queens some jack queen of hearts king jack of hearts preflop so gonna get some value out of that hand um, would I always make the bet here no. Sometimes I would actually check and let them do the betting because once people, once you check back to people and you know that you're not going to extract a lot of value against these nits, sometimes it's better just to check to them and let them bluff their entire uh, range. Okay, he checks, he makes the call. Uh, the 9 is a blank. I mean, he's not playing Jack 9. Uh, so uh, I check to him. Uh, if I make the bet on the turn, ho, ho, ho. if I make the bet on the turn, there's, uh, I mean, the, the pot is gonna be huge compared to the stack size left. I have to uh, stack off, uh, no matter what comes on the river. So I check to him. 
Uh, am I check folding? No, by the way. Uh, I'm not check folding. Um, trying to make my look to make my hand look weak by my standard C bet and then checking the flop. And I think that this way I'm gonna get more value from his hands uh, from his hand range. Uh, he although that he might actually check behind Jack Queen and Jack 10 and stuff like this. Um, he bets like 83 cents, it's a really small bet, I'm definitely not falling for this. Uh, making the call, uh, 4 is a blank, I check to him, he makes the river bet. And there's like no money, I don't understand, I mean... I mean, he seems to be betting like small for value, and I have been kind of underrepresenting my hand. I make the sh I don't like my my. I put them all in. I don't think this guy is ever gonna call me with anything worse if I check raise the river here. And um, yeah, he, I mean, he shows up with sevens. I think I like the way I played it, but I shouldn't have raised. I shouldn't have definitely not raised the river. Not against an 11-11 guy. As I, as I, I mean, I have showdown value against this type of guy. Um, um, hmm. The only thing you can say is betting the turn or not. I mean, if I bet the turn, the money is going all all in. On the river for sure. Interesting hand. Um, my f river shove is definitely wrong. Um, about the f turn check to him. I mean, you know how, how I like to play conservative, but I misplayed. I, first, I play conservative and then I sh uh, make the river raise. That's completely ridiculous. So this hand I really misplayed. I should have just called on the river, in my opinion. Okay, let's see. Okay, I have a note on this hand. King Queen suited. Thirty uh, cents raise. Uh, guy Booba Babu. Uh, only four hands. I've shown. So this is in the beginning of my session because later on I have more hands on him, I think. Uh, king Queen suited, okay. Um, flop comes, I call for value with King Queen suited, so blind versus blind. Uh, flop comes, Ace, Nine, Deuce. He C bets. Um, this is exactly the same as before when I had like jacks on the Ace high flop. It was also blind versus blind. I expect him to C bet here his entire range. Um, Obviously, with the jack, if I had jacks here, I had showdown value. Now I really don't have showdown value. I have king high. But if he's seeding his entire range here, he's gonna check so many turns to me, and I can just make a bet there and take it down with king high, because he's seeding here uh, his any pocket pair, any pair between obviously deuces and. Uh, uh, any pair between deuces and eights is c betting. Um, yeah, everything is c betting essentially. But like, there are also hands c betting here that beat me, like n eight, nine, maybe something like uh, any nine beats me, obviously. Uh, so I'm not ready to give up. And this, what I want to say about this is when you call pre-flop with suited connectors like, let's say for instance, 6, 7 suited, you can't really only play them uh, hit or fold because then you're going to lose money. You have to be creative post-flop and this requires some experience. You have to be willing to bluff people sometimes to make the hands profitable to play uh, like suited connectors. And this is, I think, exactly what I'm going to do here, but I think I get burnt. I don't know. Um, okay, so the 7 comes off. Uh, he continues. Now, for me, this is falling. Um, I expect him, if he has, like, f uh, 
a, w a weak hand, something. Uh, I was just floating him. If a heart comes off, I'm flo uh, I'm definitely betting uh, on the. On if he checks to me, I'm betting, and I'm uh, gonna fold like uh, better hands. Uh, so, but now that uh, the seven comes off and he keeps up the aggression, I'm just falling. I've put this hand in there just because there was another hand where I called uh, in position with a suit connector, and uh, it was also an ace high flop and. He, the guy C bets typically is his high flop. I completely missed it, but I knew that the guy was going to C bet it, and I knew that if he checks the turn to me, I can safely uh, bet the turn and sometimes even uh, and even bet the river uh, just as a bluff and take it down. So that's what I wanted to say about that hand. It's just uh, a way to play suited connectors. Uh, let's see if there's any immediate other hands that I. Okay, I'm. Uh, okay, so this video gave you kind of a taste how uh, I play and how I analyze my hands. This was really extreme. Uh, obviously, I don't do this analysis uh, every single time, uh, as extended as I did now. But uh, you see, it's really interesting to see how I made mistakes and. Uh, how I'm trying to make improvements to my game uh, by analyzing my own play and by putting people on ranges and uh, that's uh, is really important uh, when you want to advance as a poker player. So this was Colossus for Grinder School. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you guys in the forums.